If you don't know already, I had a series that is called Three Things in Melodic Techno. So basically, I was taking a look at the different elements in Melodic Techno, try to explain three most important things in this element. For example, there was a video about three lead sound of Melodic Techno. There was a video about three clap sound of Melodic Techno. Those times, actually, I said that I will do the exactly the same thing for Techno and Progressive House as well. But I never had the time to actually start the series. But I I guess because of the coronavirus we have a little bit more time and I thought maybe it's the time to start with the series. So today we are going to take a look at the three lead sounds of techno. We will be focusing on more like a driving peak time main room techno. So if you want to see the other videos and don't want to miss them out don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that when you make new videos on the series you will get at least a notif notification about it. But other than that let's sit down and make some lead sound that is very characteristic to techno. So as usual to make it a bit easier for us actually I've created this loop over here and, and the loop sounds like this. So there are a lot of things there already but the thing that is missing is definitely the lead sound. So we try to make this characteristic techno lead sounds that, so that we can get this really big groovy vibe out of it. The first thing, the first lead sound that I would like to do is actually somewhere between the plug sound and this kind of a distorted and detuned lead sound. So it will be in between, there will be a quite nice tail on top of that. Probably the first thing that I should show actually the, the notes. So I prepared something like this. So this is the... Uh, notes, it's not really that important at the moment. And if I just played it, it sounds like this. From the notes, you can definitely get this Umek vibe. So we will try to get there. It will be kind of giving this Umek Charlotte David somewhere in between and there. So the first thing that you would like to do actually is start carving your envelope because you would like to have this type of like a plug envelope but you still like to have this kind of a nice tail on top of that. So what I'm going to do, bring this envelope a bit. So, And on top of that, I'm going to put a bit release on top so that we have this nice smooth tail right there. You can definitely already see that we are getting there, but this, of course, now nowhere near to it. The second thing that we would like to do before we continue, actually, kind of using this unison sound so that sound gets like a bit bigger simply because we are adding more and more oscillators to it. So I will go up to like anywhere between five to there is no up limit really. You can use whatever you want, but I like to use somewhere around like seven, nine, something like that, without exaggerating too much because otherwise it will start eating up from your CPU and you can have some hard time with your computer. Immediately that we are getting that vibe has kind of a nice sound. The thing that is missing though, I will make it a bit detuned. I think this is good enough and then afterwards I will also uh, activate the actual second oscillator and this one will be tuned down one octave below so that we can have this kind of fattier sound. Let's put it even upper somewhere here, 12 or maybe, maybe 11, 10, maybe 8. Let's try. This really gets like a really fat groovy sound. What I'm going to do just to try out, I'm going to push this down one and this one like that. You can definitely hear this like this kind of really rich high end together with like really fat low and we will really use that for our purposes. The other thing that I like to do in this sound, like we will start utilizing the cutoff. To do that actually I'm going to use the envelope too, something like this, but this one will be a bit more drastic. So I will put it around something like that so that we have this curve and I'm going to put that on cutoff here. We are going to bring that down, put it up all the way up. Let's see how it sounds now. 
Let's try it a little bit. You can definitely hear this groveling thing over there. The thing that I like, when we didn't use the cutoff filter, you see that those high end was passing through and it creates this kind of nice ambience. There's a trick, it actually forgetting trick in Serum or most of the synthesizers. You can bring down the mix a little bit so that you can let some of these signals to pass through the filter and give this kind of nice high greedy end. So if I do something like this probably. You can hear this like high end passing through and it gives this kind of nice feel to it. The other thing that I like to do, I want to have the resonance. But you see it creates almost this kind of laserish feel once the note reaching on the high part. So there's a trick about that as well. If you put this other way around, so it rather than opening up, it closes down like this. It creates this kind of nice contrast. So let's try that. We are getting there, sounding cool. The thing that I'm feeling like that is missing is adding there also a bit really nice white noise on top of that so it gets even grittier. So if we play again. Let's do the similar thing here. Let's activate the envelope tree and put it something like this. I'm gonna use this also for the tuning. So I want this even sharper, something probably like that. Let's start with the levels of the noise. Let's put something like that. You can hear this additional pitch on top of that. And we will also use this envelope actually for the fine here. So each hit, each note will bring the pitch up very fast and then close it down very fast as well. So that means that if you carry this one and put it right here, and a shift alt and click here so it's like one sided not going up and down and bring down a bit probably something like that and let's do the same thing to the second one but this time let's put it on the other side so these two is like moving like against each other really there like gives that really nice sound by the way we should click this mono as well the things that we can do we have LFO so we should use them and how you can use them actually creating this kind of rolling end or tail that I mentioned earlier so if I draw something like that it's not really that important so and if I put it to the cutoff you will see the effect let me do it like this Let's bring down this like um, to the bar so that it is slowly evolving and we put it in the triggering mode so that it acts like an envelope rather than a level that's like going back and forward all the time. Do you hear that sound? So what we can do actually... It is a small thing, but you can still hear that rub, rub. So there's not much left here. So we are utilizing the latest part. Like uh, the volume is a bit down, but I still like to have it there just to give this kind of nice. Uh, this is kind of the beginning of the sound. Like it is ready to go, but we need to do some stuff on the effect side. So you have to get the sound a bit bigger. The thing that I like to do, for example, adding a distortion, but playing with the drive level with the envelope as well. So what we are going to do in this case, put there, for example, diode, maybe something like a bit more aggressive. Here it is too aggressive. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to add this LFO on the drive. So when the hit happens, we also driving that up. You can definitely hear this like really strong hit each time. Once you are doing techno or this type of techno, driving techno, you want to hear or feel this power. And this is the one of the easiest way to reach that. The other thing that I like to do using compressor, but we can come back to that later, depending on how we feel about the verb so that we can actually compress the reverb as well. The important thing here is actually the reverb and how we use it. The, giving it a bit too much may push the sound a bit too on the backside. You have to be a bit careful, but you still need to get this like big ambience mode. Because I'm trying to do everything in 
in Serum. So in real mode, actually, you can sidechain it to itself so that when the reverb hits, you are ducking. There's a trick that you can do in Serum, so we are going to do that, actually. But first, get the reverb right. You can definitely hear this, like, bum bum sound, like, without this. What we are going to do, though, we're going to use this and bring this other way around, like that. And right afterwards, we are going to use that EQ and bring... cut down a little bit the lows, so that it's not that fatty. So, if we do it this way... And push this highs a bit. Again, if you want to go a bit higher vibes, you can definitely do like this, and you will get this higher pitch. And I feel like I really enjoy when it's like dark like this. Let's bring that compressor in now. And I will say, this is the first one, again, you can utilize another filter to maybe even make it a bit more interesting, make it a bit more clickier. You can put the same cut off here and make it a bit maybe darker depends on the taste i would prefer the sound like this I, I want this like dark feel to it and this was the first one the only first one and the second one will be a bit more i guess if a bit more sustained and let's say this one is d sustained d tune super sauce to start this one i think the important thing is actually showing up the notes a little bit and actually showing which scale that we are using if you think about it, if let's say if we were using the G, G sharp minor, this should be the first one, the second one, and the third one. And we won't be using the G, G note over here. And this is something that is used a lot in techno, so that you have like the dissonant notes here. But in techno, it just gives this kind of aggressive vibe to it, like this angry vibe to it. When I play the sound, it will be a bit more obvious. But when you make this kind of super sauce using this kind of this type of MIDI notes, out of tune notes, can really help to get this aggressive vibe to it. So the similar thing will happen here as well. I will just load the serum. And if I just play it, it, it will actually sound like this. Again, it's pretty techno sounding, but it needs that bite. It needs this grit. As this is super so, we would like to use that unison. What I'm going to do, put this up anywhere like 10, 8, whatever. The same thing here. Let's use this one 10 as well, just to keep the the same thing. Main thing with the super so is actually you should like to de tune them pretty wide, so that you have this kind of dark vibe. What I like to do, put this one one octave below, and if I play now, you will hear the difference. <laughs> It's already pretty techno soundy, but again, there are things that you would like to do for this type of the sound. The first thing that I like to do is actually put a little bit of resonance over there, open up the cutoff filter a bit, and then the thing that I like to do is actually driving it a bit as well, so it will give also a bit feather sound again if we play. <laughs> It, it gets a bit great here. At first it can sound a bit worse than the original version, but when you're playing in the mix, you want to have this kind of stronger resonant vibe in it, in the, especially on the high end, because it will help cut through the mix, if that makes sense. Let's put the second, of course I forget to put the second oscillator to do filter as well, so now both of them are going into the filter. If we play once more. Really, really great, I really like it. And the, other thing that you should do actually, utilizing the LFO, and we are going to put that LFO on the again fine tuning here. It will go up and down. It will make it really, really disabled. Like the, the amount is depend on how you like to have it. Like if I do it this much, it's a bit too much, obviously. But you have to bring this down. But again, having this really unstable vibe really helps in the techno tracks. So let's bring this down a bit and try again. 
really, really gritty and cool vibe in it. Other thing that you can do, of course, the adding this white noise. I feel like white noise always at this gritty sound and I really enjoy it uh, for this type of thing. So what I'm going to do this time, we're just going to use it something like that. Let's play it. <laughs> And we would like to pitch it slightly up so that we have a bit brighter version of that uh, white noise in this case. I know it sounds wide and nice, but when you have these super souls, be careful with your stereo field. If you make them too wide, when you collapse them into the mono, the sound can get really weird and phased and bad. The thing that you can do in the serum, you can actually go to this global tab and bring the width down a little bit. So let's play a bit and bring this down and see how it affects the sound. <laughs> It definitely brings the sound a bit in the middle and tidies up a bit the stereo field. I like to do it this way simply because it's a safer option. It means that when the track is actually played in the club, in the mono system, I am a bit safer that the sound will be still there and it's not disappearing. And to start with, I think this is more or less ready for the oscillation and the filter part. The only thing that I would need is actually adding kind of a, this envelope and going back to FX now because I'm going to actually use th those envelopes in the FX section instead. When you have this like a continuous sound, I like to actually use X Shaper here because it also gives this kind of a bit of warmth to the sound. So if I just bring the mix, this is the origin sound. <laughs> It really tames that high end a little bit. The thing that I like to do is actually putting that LFO a little bit top here, so mix is going up a little bit. Again, you shouldn't exaggerate it too much because now we're just distorting more and the volume is a bit, a bit differentiating. You can solve that issue by compressing a bit. But again, I think it, this is good enough for the moment. The other thing here should be definitely reverb and having giving this kind of really nice ambience. So if we play again once more with the reverb. <laughs> You can actually compress reverb with the origin sound and it may make the sound even a bit bigger. And then probably a final touch could be, depending on how you feel, adding a little bit of EQ if you want to boost, for example, high end slightly. Really, really fat sound. The additional things that you can consider could be a phaser. Sometimes it gives this kind of really weird digital vibe to the sound. As there are a lot of things actually going on, it's harder to actually understand really, but in the end, works fine. The thing that actually works fine with this sound, show you what I mean. If you can do it in any dove, so for this case, I'm gonna just use the Ableton compressor. You can use it in the serum as well, but I am a bit too lazy to do that. You can just put this here, compression, side chain, side chain to the kick, and bring it down a little bit. It will give this kind of nice groove and glue this sound together with the drag and make it sounding a bit better. So if we try it once more. <laughs> Again, I'm sure you have heard this type of sound a lot in techno tracks. It's used intensively, especially when you want to have this really big energetic main room techno track and sustained sound. We kind of use the half plug, we use the sustained sound. And the other thing that you would always hear, again, half sustained sound, but repeating quite a fast, so you, quite a lot. So you would like to have a, a regular sound and then it will repeat a lot and then it will just follow the simple chord progression. So like we like here, you can take a look. We have just D and F and E is basically first, third and the second. Super simple, they quite nice close to each other as well. Don't need to 
go super crazy when once you are programming this sound and when you feel like you, you are feeling the vibes and the tones then you can start moving things around and see how it works but before Serum you also have to put an arpeggiator and I, in this case I'm just having using like regular arpeggiator straight groove and the 16 notes so it will just repeat itself if I play now it will sound like this <laughs> Really extremely simple. So I like to start with envelopes all the time because it gives it the body to the sound. We will sustain it slightly, but we will also have this kind of really slight ever attack and a slight ever decay just there. So it sounds like this. You can definitely hear that movement. Depending on the taste, you can go full sustain as well, but I like to do it this way. The thing that I like for this type of sound is actually movement on the waveform. So I would like to find something, if you put it in the 3D here, I want to find something that is continuous so that I can make this smooth movement on the waveform. So let's if we go through like this, let's find something that's sounding, looking and sounding interesting. I think this one has some kind of a nice um, solve to it here. Let's try this. I think this can actually work. What you can do here, because I want this movement, we are gonna pick another envelope, envelope two, and make it maybe something like this. It doesn't really matter. You can get create pretty creative. Let's start with this and let's put this on to wave table position and maybe do something like this. Let's try. <laughs> Something like that. So you can hear this, it gets quite plasticky, quite sticky as well. And this is exactly what we are looking for. And afterwards, I'm just going to put this unison so that we get this nice big sound. Let's do tune that a little bit as well. It, it is getting there. So let's activate the second oscillator and put it one octave below. And I would like to do a similar thing here. Let's put in the 3T, try to get something looking a bit more interesting. I don't want to scroll too much, so let's pick some this way. And what I would like to do now, try a little bit together. And maybe let's put that here as well. It gets shaky and sticky. And let's use that uh, envelope actually on the cutoff too, so that all this movement makes a little bit sense and gets a bit more glue together. Let's drive that filter. I'm sure you understand what I'm going with this. And as usual, let's put the white noise, but this time I want to have a bit darker sound, so I will go for the pink noise. And I'm gonna actually thinking of adding an um, envelope, a very fast envelope, so that I can, or I can make that white noise quite plucky. So if I take this one and put it here, something like this. Oh yeah. Right, right like that. The thing that I like for this type of sound actually using the sub as a kind of a marker. So I'm gonna put it one octave up so it will go quite a bit up in the notes. So if I play this. And let's put it something like this so we can actually hear. What is fun with this guy over here actually, you can create something like this, like uh, let's say, square waveform so that it is actually on if you put this one for example the uh, sound level it will be kind of on and off all the time and this will give some weird relation to the original sound so let's put it something like that and then maybe let's put it into the yeah let's try like this let's see how it works <laughs> let's go trip or the dot so that the each hit is slightly different so that it will give this kind of a bit different groove. Let's 
just there. You hear it, but it's not that in the front, so you barely hear it. It makes a bit, it it feels a bit weird, but it it adds this kind of really additional character to the sound, which I really enjoy. The other thing that I would like to do, probably you already under get the idea, put this guy to do here so that we can make the sound move around a little bit. Let's put it here as well. For this type of sound, I prefer to have one in the without unison so that it's in the middle. It gives a bit body to the sound, but you can definitely do like the way we did with the others. But I feel like this one sounds a bit stronger. For me, it sounds actually better. Let's put into the mono as well. And then, of course, from there, from there, we have to go to the effects and play around a little bit. Depending on what type of taste you are looking for, again, I like, for example, X Shaper. Let's try with it. Start with it. Just like that. You can again play around with the LFO so that it can also have this dun dun movement. Or maybe you can actually remove this and use our second modulating envelope and put it here. Again, let's put a bit phaser. And then let's put a nice syrup there as well. You can definitely utilize a bit delay as well to give this kind of nice vibe or nice repeating feel on the background, especially if you go for maybe dots like this. I feel like because you would like to have this very strong sound in techno, once you add this type of delays, it makes the sound a bit less focused and less aggressive. So for this case, maybe avoiding it is a better idea. The final thing, depending on what you want to do, put maybe a bit of compression. You can go for multiband, but I think it becomes a bit overkill because it makes it too distorted, like this. But maybe a nice mix. Again, it depends what you go, if you do like this, it, it's a bit too much, like keeping it simple, keeping it slightly mixed is probably a better idea. And finally, maybe we boost that high end a little bit again. Or maybe we would like to make it greedier, so in this case you can pick this guy and find an area, make it a bit bigger. Oh yeah, you, you get that mid area and boost that and it sounds really nice. You can even make this one move around a little bit actually. You can put this here and do like this. But then maybe it is too much of a movement, so you want to keep it focused. Maybe you want to just boost here. Again, really nice. Uh, but for me, I think more or less this is it. I feel like these are the probably most used three lead sound that you would hear in in techno tracks. I avoid actually using Aces sound because I just made a video about it yesterday, so I don't want to do it again. <laughs> this is the reason, but if you want to also see the Acid video, just look at the video that I did yesterday, so it will be there. Aces sound is actually used as much and it is as important, but it was the main reason that I avoided it in this video. But if you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that you get notifications when we make new videos in this series. Other than that, stay at home and I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.